Hi, this is Larry Greenblatt. I want to share with you some tips on how to pass the CISSP. And I've been teaching this class for almost two decades now. And I've been using Star Trek analogies in my class as a big Star Trek fan growing up. And my students seem to love it. And I've gotten a lot of feedback over the years how it's really helped. So I've decided to create a series. This uh, first one is going to cover security and risk management. I'm going to do one for each of the domains. So we're going to see how Kirk and Spock can help us pass a test. I want you to understand some terminologies, uh, a subject and an object. If you're studying for the exam, you're probably familiar with, uh, at a very basic level, the, the Bell Padula model, the first formal access control model that looked at users as subjects and files as objects. But a file is anything the user is using. In this case, uh, Lieutenant Ohura is using a Vulcan harp. And uh, Ohura is the subject and the harp is the object. Now, whatever subject plays the guitar or plays the um, harp here is gonna make different music. And is that music good? Well, that depends on what the subject likes. But no matter what uh, subject plays it, it's still gonna have four strings, or excuse me, four knobs, and uh, didn't you count the number of strings on there? Let's say 32. <laughs> and um, that's the same, the same quantities of strings regardless. So we want to keep that in mind. And we're going to have Kirk and Spock advising us the entire time we take the test. So a lot of times in movies or cartoons, you'll see a devil and an angel on the um, uh, person's shoulders guiding them along. Well, I like to have Kirk and Spock. And Spock is my uh, objective thinker. He's very quantitative in his, in his um, approach to things. So when you do risk management, you often see we have quantitative and qualitative approaches. And Kirk is the qualitative guy, and he's very subjective in his thinking. Kirk is also senior management. Let's keep that in perspective. He runs the ship. Spock merely advises him. Yes, yeah, Spock can look at the, say, now I play guitar. I could speak better about that than that. Vulcan harp. Um, no matter what subject plays a guitar, my guitars all have six strings. It's the same quantity of strings, and Spock can measure that. And he can speak matter of factually about the things he measures. He's very objective. He's looking at the object. And no matter who looks at it, we'll get the same answers, as long as they're measuring properly. Cost is also very quantitative. I can tell you what the guitar costs by showing you a receipt and everybody could look at that and agree. But what's a guitar worth? Well, that depends on what people are willing to pay for it. So value is different than, than cost. Value is what something is worth. And that depends on, on the person playing the guitar or, or wanting the guitar. I have a Gibson uh, robot, Green SG, that I paid $1,000 for, and I just did a quick look on uh, eBay, and I see them selling for as little as uh, $1,200, as high as uh, $2,600. So I don't know if they're going to get those prices, but that's why they're still for sale. But again, these are the values that people are trying to uh, assign to them. Yeah, Spock certifies. Spock is very certain. The root, for, root word for certify is to be certain. The root word for a credit, and my mother was uh, like the father for my big fat Greek wedding. She taught me that uh, if you give her any word, she can show you how it come from the Greek, uh, even though she was mostly Irish. But whatever the case is, uh, I can't find the Greek origin of a credit, so I wish you were here with me to help me out. I can only find the Latin. And uh, the root word is cred. And cred means to believe. That's a very uh, good word to know for your CISSP exam in general. In identity management, I can claim to be Larry, but having a driver's license will help you believe it because it is a credential. Yeah, credentials give credits to claims. It's hard to prove things right in the real world, but it's very easy to prove things wrong. So often in my class, I'll throw a pen up in the air and I'll say, every time I throw this up in the air, I'm going to catch it. I can't prove that, right? That would take infinity. That's the same reason we've never really proven that a random number generator is random. 
It's not that there's no such thing as a random number generator. It's just that it would take infinity to prove it. The number pi, uh, which, by the way, Stephen Hawkins just passed away the other day. I'm recording this right after that. And um, he died on Pi Day, which was also Einstein's birthday. It's just an aside there. Um, but the number pi seems to be random as far as we can measure it, but we've never measured it out to infinity, and it would take that to actually say it's truly random, the sequence. So when I take my test, and I advise my students to let Spock take the questions first. You should always certify before you accredit. So Spock looks at, at the answers and he tries to prove wrong answers. Sometimes he might be able to prove three of them are wrong when you only have four questions, four answers, and that's great. Sometimes he can't prove any of them. And it's all up to Kirk to just feel what answer is right. I try to rig these series. I'm going to try to do a series for each of the eight domains. I'm going to do one for each. And where I'm going to have a question um, where there's two or so answers that I can prove wrong but then it'll be up to Kirk to feel which answer is better. Uh, something too important to, to know for your test too, by the way, we, we deal with many standards in the information security world, uh, especially on the internet, and they are developed by the ISO. The ISO, uh, many people think is an acronym for International Standards Organization. It's not an acronym. It's a word that comes from the Greek. It means equal. And something that was very cool to me growing up uh, watching Star Trek was that everybody was treated equally. It didn't matter if you were uh, from another planet, if you were from a, a, another country, even, even if you were Scottish, uh, you were still treated equally. <laughs> so. All right, so Spock and Kirk are sitting down at the test. Spock, the scope of ISO, IEC 2702, includes which of the following? And Spock tries to quantify answers as wrong. So 27001 and 002 are very testable, by the way. 27001 is an information security management standard. It is there to allow uh, companies to be certified under this standard through an independent auditing organization. And then... Um, use this to develop trust between organizations. 27002 is a guideline to help you uh, implement this. A, standards for information security management systems? Negative, Captain. It is not the standard. 27002 is the guideline. Is it B, mandatory requirements for audit objectives? Negative, Captain. That would be a standard. That again refers to 27001. All right, so he was certain about A and B, and they were wrong. Is it suggestions for the development of security standards? Affirmative, Captain. It could definitely be looked at that way. Is it D, guidance on control objectives? Affirmative, Captain. It can also be used in that matter. So now Spock is done, and it's up to Kirk to decide which answer is better, C or D? Well, the overall objective as captain of this ship, Spock, is for me to develop my security standards. Yes, I can see where that includes guidance on the control objectives. I'm going with C. And that is the better answer. Yeah. Right from the ISO uh, page, 27002 is a common basis and a practical guideline for developing organizational security standards and effective security management practices and to help build confidence in inter-organizational activities. Well, I hope that helps. Again, I plan to do uh, seven more, one for each of the domain. And if you want to know more, I do teach this class live online. And I have recorded my uh, 2018 version, and it's up for sale. If you want to know more about that, please contact us at sales at internetworkdefense.com. Thank you very much, and may you all live long and prosper.